So one thing that's really important to understand as a software engineer is how to debug your code. And this is something that you'll actually learn over the years when you're trying to learn how to code and you'll probably stumble for a while actually understanding good strategies for debugging your code. I've been doing it for almost 10 years now, so I have a lot of tips and tricks that I could probably make videos on, but I kind of want to focus on one tip that I like doing, especially when it comes to debugging larger systems or you have like larger pieces of code that do a lot of things. But before we jump into that topic, I want to remind you to press that like button because it helps my channel grow and also be sure to subscribe and press the bell icon if you want to see videos like this in the future that should hopefully help you become a better web developer. So let's let's talk about debugging. How do you potentially debug a larger piece of code that's maybe touching a lot of different files and doing a lot of functionality under the hood? So one tip I like to do is kind of extract and test in isolation. So what I mean by that is if you have a big chunk of code that's doing a lot of stuff, typically the bugs that you run into are only involved with a smaller subset of code, whether it be a function or you know a smaller component in that code base. And what you want to do is you want to basically take that code and find a way to run it in isolation. A great way to do this is by using unit tests where you can actually unit test the function isolation. You can do some type of integration tests where you kind of test the entire path. But sometimes an integration test might be verifying too much. But when it comes to automated testing, maybe you're not at that level yet. So what I'm going to show you is a tip I like doing where I take the code and I extract it and I kind of run it in isolation just to do some experimentation of like what's going on behind the scenes. Why isn't this code working? So I'm going to actually show you some diagrams and talk about a concrete example so you can kind of get a good idea about what I mean when I say extract and test in isolation. So let's first kind of explore what I'm trying to actually show you that's happening in a system that I'm actually building right now. So this is actually a real life example, and I think it can help really exemplify what I mean with extract and test in isolation. So I have a component here. I haven't used this whiteboard app before, so hopefully this is actually something fun to use. But I have a component which basically tries to push a bunch of files to a remote web server, right? So this is, I'll call it component A. Um, and we are going to be pushing a ton of files or trying to upload files to another component. I'll call it component B. And that component is going to push a kind of run a command to add a file. So I'll do component C. And these are really abstract, but basically component A is in this example, there is a Lambda that's running and it needs to take files that a user uploads and push it to a express service that's going to be component B. So it's a little bit hard for me to write with this because I don't actually have like a a stencil or anything, but this right here, this component is a Lambda on Amazon that's just pushing and trying to upload files to this component, which is an Express app, which is running Malter to kind of take those files and push them to a directory. And then we have component C, which is IPFS. So IPFS is a node that you can run to basically decentralize um, your storage, right? So you can kind of upload a file to IPFS and you can access the content by just providing a hash. So you can go to like ipfs.io slash put in the hash. And behind the scenes, the entire network figures out where that file is stored because everything is decentralized and then it finally will return the file to you. So the issue I'm running into is that component A is pushing a ton of files really quick to component B, right? So this is like getting a lot of traffic. This one right here is pushing too many files. And because of this, something over here inside of B and C, like combined together, something is getting overwhelmed and all of these requests end up failing. I know this is like a really bad diagram, but basically all of the requests start failing at some point, which means that the server that's hosting B and C is running into some type of issue. Maybe I'm pushing too many files at once. Maybe there's too many um, files that are trying to be written to the disk at once. There's some type of memory thrashing going on. I don't know. So what I'm trying to say is sometimes you need to test components or subsystems in isolation to figure out what's going on. And by the way, in this example, component B and C are running on a digital ocean, I'll say DO droplet, digital ocean droplet. So let me show you what I did to kind of figure out what the actual issue is, because it turns out that this thing, IPFS, cannot handle too many concurrent additions to their underlying file system at once, right? So if you try to add too many files at once, it brings down your entire system. So I want to show you like what I did to kind of figure that out. So I'm actually SSH into my DigitalOcean droplet right here, and I have some files that I kind of have in this directory. So I needed to test what is the issue? Is the issue IPFS? Can that not handle enough file uploads at once? Or is the issue my node server? Because there's kind of two main components that are in play dealing with this use case where I need to upload files to my IPFS node. Um, so first of all, what I tried doing was I needed to test to see if 
I can add files to IPFS. So what I did is I made a little example sh script, which is a bash script, which basically just loops over all the PNGs in the current directory. There's about 60 of them. And it just calls IPF add one at a time, right? So I wanted to make sure that I could actually do this. I'm gonna just do an echo here, adding a file. And what I also did was I split my terminal. So hopefully this can actually like demonstrate what's going on. And so you can see here, I have two services running on this machine. I have one called index, which is like the express server that's wrapping IPFS. And then I have the actual IPFS node, which allows me to pin files to the IPFS cluster basically. Um, and I need to first test the IPFS cluster. So let's just go ahead and do some PM2 logs on that service so we can kind of see what's going on behind the scenes. And then looking at this run sh, I should be able to see a console log every time I did it. So what I kind of did was I wanted to test this component in isolation. I, wanted, I need to kind of experiment to see how fast can I add files to this. So let's just go ahead and run that script and I'll kind of show you that it can actually add files decently fast. I mean, the server's not crashing. Um, the logs aren't printing over here, so I don't think I even need this one. But I wanted to convince myself that like I could actually add files at a decent rate to this server. So basically, there's no issue with adding files one by one. Um, so the next thing I wanted to do is I wanted to make sure that can I do the same thing with my express service. So what I did is if I go to that run.sh script, so in that run.sh script, let's just go ahead and comment out that line. And I'm going to go ahead and uncomment that one. So what this is going to do is it's going to run a script called index.js. And I'll show that for you real quick. All this script does is it basically sends multi-part file uploads to the service that's running kind of wrapping IPFS. So let me go ahead and get that log going. All right, so same idea. We have a script that basically tries to send messages over one by one to this server to see if I can potentially get it to crash or lock up at some time. So let's just go ahead and run that one again. And notice that it successfully uploads the files one by one. I'm not seeing any slowdowns. Like it's taking about 200 milliseconds per file to upload. So I'm not seeing any issues. All right, so none of these tests really show me what's going on because I haven't crashed my system. But it turns out what I can actually do is if I, let me just go ahead and stop this one, it might take a while. So now what I kind of did was I, I convinced myself that these services can actually handle traffic, right? I can upload files to them one by one and nothing really bad happens. But the issue starts to occur when I upload too many files in parallel, right? So let's just go back to that run script. So let me just show you what I did to verify. Can IPFS add 60 files at once, right? So basically running the exact same command I did before, but I added an ampersand at the end. This basically allows this sh script to run these commands as a background process. So I can do 60, um, 60 ads at once to IPFS. So by doing that, let me just go ahead and save that. And I'm gonna go ahead and run that script. And one thing that you'll notice is this server will actually basically freeze up and restart itself. So let me just go ahead and show you this. This is basically gonna brick the server. It's gonna eat up all the memory slash all the CPU and the server will no longer work. So if I run this, it's gonna to try to pin or add 60 images at once to IPFS. And obviously like thinking about it now, like yes, you can crash a lot of servers by doing this. So if I run this script, you'll notice that it tries to add as many files at once. That so took like two seconds to loop through all 60 files. And now this server becomes kind of unresponsive, right? Like I'm trying to press enter, the terminal's not responding because the server is actually getting overworked. The CPU spiked up to 100 and notice that the memory is now spiking up all the way up to like 977 basically. I don't really know why because the images I'm uploading aren't that big. They're like maybe less than a megabyte each or like half a megabyte. So that kind of showed me that if I tested IPFS in isolation, there's a hard limit of how many files I can add at once. Um, and at some point, the IPFS server either restarts or just can't handle all this stuff. And a main reason this is happening is because the DigitalOcean droplet I'm using is the smallest I can possibly get. It's like two gigabytes of memory or one gigabyte of memory in one core. So to be able to process all that stuff at once, Obviously, it can't do it. So the whole point of this video was to show you like how you can test stuff in isolation, how you should test stuff in isolation, just to check, you know, why stuff is failing, how stuff is failing. And again, you can kind of apply this to a smaller scale project. You don't need to do this with system wide testing. You can kind of just take a function out, write it in a node script, run the function and verify does the function do what you expect it to do. All right. So going back to this little diagram, basically what I've shown was that this IPFS module three and not handle a lot of requests. So how do you actually mitigate this issue? Well, you can kind of implement some type of queue system in front of your express server here. So if you know anything about queues, basically you can create like a first in first out queue and limit how many files you try to add at once. 
and basically only have a certain amount in um, working kind of in parallel. So I could put that in the express server itself here. I could put some type of queue to say, I only want to be able to run 10 of these commands at once so that I don't stress the underlying system that this thing is calling. There are libraries and packages that kind of do this for me, that kind of like built in and kind of queue up requests so that the underlying service doesn't crash. I need to go and look at NPM to find some of those and pull them in. But I believe you can just easily add that into your express service. And then I can only allow this endpoint to be called maybe 10 times in parallel. And then any extra call, like the 11th call, will be queued up and only processed after those one of those 10 kind of get wrapped up. So that's all I kind of wanted to share in this video. I know it's probably a little bit more advanced and I started throwing about a lot of keywords, but honestly, this is the kind of problems you run into when you're dealing with larger systems that kind of process as much data as possible. There's really a fine line in software between like how fast can I get this to work before I need to either limit requests or I need to scale out my infrastructure, right? If you don't want to pay a bunch of money to have like 10 IPFS nodes running, well, then I need to figure out a way to prevent it from DDoSing my entire systems, right? So you put things in front of your node, such as a queue or some type of like rate limiting to prevent external users. And in this case, this is an internal operation that happens in my system. I basically need to either prevent my module A from sending out too many requests, or I need to basically module B needs to queue up the requests and not process too many at once. So these are decisions that you kind of have to start getting into when you get into system design, or if you're like a um, site reliability engineer, you have to think about all these things, especially when you're dealing with scale and you're trying to process messages as fast as possible because the servers underneath the hood can only do so much work before they start running out of memory. They start locking up because you're using all the CPU or your network bandwidth is eaten up. So like always, if you enjoyed watching this video, give me a thumbs up. Also leave a comment below if you have a different way that you like kind of limiting how many requests can hit your API endpoints. And like always, press that subscribe and bell icon if you want to see more videos like this in the future that should hopefully help you become a better software engineer or web developer. Have a good day and happy coding.